Put your seatbelts on for this one, because the view may be beautiful, but it's going to be a bumpy ride. Join me for this interesting, mildly offensive, full resort tour. Let's get right into it. Welcome to Fiji. If you'd like to know the exact nightly rate that I paid for my stay, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel, my name is Kevin. You have found yourself on a channel that thinks that the world needs a bit more honest travel content. I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge to be sure I get a true experience. Then I can give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. Shangri-La Noun 1. A remote, usually idyllic hideaway. 2. A remote, beautiful, imaginary place where life approaches perfection. Utopia. Example. Oh my! Look at this pristine South Pacific island. It feels like a true Shangri-La. I've been to a Shangri-La before, in Hong Kong, but it was decades ago. Still though, I thought I knew what to expect. Before I get into the meat of this, let me mention two things. First of all, I was well aware that the resort was not the most modern place in the world, and as for 5-star resort prices go in Fiji, this was certainly one of the lower priced ones out there. But anyone that follows my channel knows that I really do like to show off what should be approachable and affordable luxury hotels. Secondly, and this is perhaps the part that is most tragic, offensive maybe even, of this entire experience. The location and the setting. It is absolutely spectacular. Having originally opened way back in 1967, everything is grown in. The first impression driving onto the private island was one that inspired a genuinely positive, whoa, So, how could it go so wrong? Well, that's an easy one. Greed. Flat out, greed. No way around it. In a manner that I haven't seen since the Hilton Copacabana in Rio, they are just milking these facilities until they are bone dry. The last full renovation was in 2005. More recently, in 2019, there were renovations to some common areas, including one bar and one restaurant as well as to a limited number of private villas on site and the pool at the club access reef wing. Everything else is seemingly untouched and hasn't exactly been handled with kid gloves. Walking up to the reception area, two things will strike you as you walk inside. First, this is where breezes come to die. I'm not exaggerating. The further back into the reception area you went, the hotter it got until you reach the check-in desks on the far wall. I have never, honestly, seen check-in agents literally dripping. I just felt bad for them. I mean, come on, buy a damn fan or a portable AC, something. Keep in mind, it wasn't abnormally hot in general while I was there. Secondly, there is almost always a line. Why? Because if you stand there and do a bit of eavesdropping, you will find out that nearly every single guest in line is disputing a charge on their bill, or having problems getting their credit card hold released. I rarely cite online reviews in my reviews, but if you look at the reviews of this hotel, which I did while I was there, you'll see multiple examples of missed charges, or even more, of credit card holds taking months or longer to be released. When I checked out, I was told there was a problem with their machine and they couldn't release my hold. Surprise, surprise. They also couldn't apply my bill to my hold. Knowing the reviews that I read, I refused to leave until it was released. I ended up waiting in the duty manager's office for nearly 30 minutes while he was doing God knows what, and then suddenly, magically even, it was fixed. Anyway, let's get on with the tour. Part of the property has these porticos to walk under, which are convenient during the hottest hours of the days, and all lead to this central area 
which is surrounded by shops, a mini-mart, tour desks, and so on, with some of the restaurants and primary pool area on the far side. Let's head over to that primary pool now. It's actually a very nice pool. It's well spread out and definitely large enough with the main part of the beach just in front of it. If you support the content I've been putting out on the channel or honest travel content in general, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Those are the two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video was worth your time. For anyone interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks for watching today. This is though one of those annoying resorts that will come literally rope off all of the pools come 6pm. Then there is a family beach area with the giant floating jungle gym in the distance. So one of the claims to fame here is that it is the largest private island in Fiji with just one resort on it. On the southern coral coast of Viti Levu, Fiji's main island, the resort does in fact have its own island, but just barely, separated from the mainland by a small canal. The island is over 100 hectares and the resort really is spread out. From one end of just the accommodation buildings to the other is over a kilometer long. With 443 rooms in total, they advertise that the adults-only reef wing as having one quarter of the entire island dedicated to it. Well, here's the reef wing. You can decide if that's one quarter of the island. The beach itself was clean, but everything around here was just a mismatch of different stuff. Lots of furniture in poor repair, some areas legitimately looking like the third day of a three-day garage sale. I'll point out, this chair doesn't even have a seat. A large portion of the rooms are right behind the pool area. Some of them are okay, but the ones that are closer to the center of the resort area are really exposed to everyone just walking by, literally right in front. So, let's have lunch at the Beach Bar and Grill, just next door. The setting is beautiful, but the furniture, well, it's hard to tell, but all of the furniture is all of that old-fashioned hollow metal style that's been repainted like 12 times, and everything was just sticky. I ordered a chicken burger and asked for the fries to be well done and to have no tomato on the burger. Well, the server needed to go back and ask if that was quote-unquote allowed. Okay, he came back, and sure enough, my insane requests were in fact permitted. You may have guessed already though, neither of those things were actually done. Mind you, I was the only person in the restaurant at the time. It tasted exactly as it looked, like a university cafeteria burger. Alright, time to take the beautiful stairs one level up and I'll show you some more of the facilities. Let's make our way through a maze of paths and stairways to get to the other side of the resort. In case it needs saying, no, this is not an accessibility-friendly place, unless you're staying at the reef wing and never leave it. Many of the rooms are in low-slung buildings like these with ocean views, similar to how mine was. On the way over to the reef wing, there's a massive event center and admittedly a well-maintained mini golf course. Passing by a few tennis courts, we arrive at the reef wing. Keep in mind, this is around a 15 to 20 minute walk from where I just had lunch.
The selling points of the Reef Wing are the adults-only atmosphere and their own private restaurant, which only Reef Wing guests can access. The restaurant, just adjacent to the very charming Bar Cage, which is giving me very strong 1991 East Harlem vibes. Okay, time to see my room. Excited? I was upgraded to this ground level walkout ocean view room. Allow me to show you around. So, three things that you can't see. One, the musty smell. Two, the persistent humidity. And three, the mosquitoes. Likely all three being related. And that dampness did also extend to the bed linens, which is a pet peeve of mine at any tropical resort. Overall, the room itself, it's dated. It's in desperate need of a remodel. But, 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 it's not terrible. For the price, it's not terrible. And look, they even have you all set up so you can conduct your own therapy sessions at your desk, which you might need after seeing the cleanliness issues. The mini bar had an assortment of teas and instant coffee, and in the land of the best tasting water on earth, we had to settle for bottled Shangri-La tap water. The closet itself wasn't too big, but there was another part of it in the bathroom and there was space in the room to put your bags if need be. The bathroom was just an odd layout, but it was functional enough. Just one crappy shower head though. Okay, so now can I show you the good part? Actually, the good part, I'm not being sarcastic. I do in fact think that I got the best building on site, and while I'm not usually a fan of walkout rooms, in this case, it was well worth it. And the water here is just insanely beautiful.
And now, let me show you the bad part. Some of that's dirt, and some of it is dead bugs. After my stay here, I do now believe I'm officially considered a Mosquito Master. By the way, as someone who comes from the restaurant industry, if you ever get any glassware or plate or ice bucket that still has a label on it, that tells you precisely one thing. It has never been washed properly. Some ghost fingerprints. Just a generally grimy and gross bathroom floor. And oh look, some hairs. And then the inside of my bathroom garbage can. I didn't take a bag out, not that that would be an excuse. It was just like this. I, I, I hope that's ketchup. If it's not, I don't want to know. And some more stains and dust and grime. So, who's staying here? I genuinely apologize to the people that I'm about to offend, because it's not my intention. I have this channel so I can show you beautiful places worthy of your hard-earned vacation dollars. But the people staying here are mostly people looking for a deal that just don't know any better. I I'll say I'm included. Shangri-La should mean something. Shangri-La, in this case, should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. I know what it's like to find a luxury hotel for a good price and get really excited about it. I do it like on a weekly basis. But anyone staying here has genuinely been duped and ripped off. A few of the kids areas next. First up was a virtual reality room. All this was was an empty room with one child at a time wearing a VR headset pretending to shoot things. Then we have these ping pong tables which no matter what time of the day it was were actually never lit up. And then my favorite, I'm going to freeze frame this, the children's TV room. Or as I like to call it, the opening scene of every horror movie from 1983. Moving on. There is one more pool area, which is elevated on a bit of a cliff and has a bar and restaurant surrounding it, the ones that were renovated. The restaurant is Takali Asian Kitchen, a pan-Asian restaurant. When I came here to film, I asked about reservation availability. The very friendly hostess said that they were fully booked, but for me to come early, have a seat at the bar, and just let her know that she was here, and she'd do her best to fit me in as soon as she could. That was very nice of her. It was a bit of a shame, though, that the hostess that told me to come and sit at the bar wasn't actually working. The hostess that was actually there, frankly, didn't care what the other hostess said to me. But there were a lot, and I mean a lot, of open tables. Even 30 minutes after I'd been sitting there and the restaurant had been open, so I was hopeful. Thank God, given all of this so far, we did have a very beautiful pink sunset. Here we are at Black Marlin Bar, which has plenty of seating inside and out, and credit where credit was due, it was nicely renovated. So yes, I'll take responsibility for not having made reservations to begin with, but I waited at the bar for over an hour. Thought maybe she forgot me, so I reminded her she told me to have a seat in the waiting area. Mind you, more than half of the tables were empty. Another 30 minutes later, the original friendly hostess came, saw me sitting there, and at full volume said to the other hostess, Why do you just leave him there and not seat him? To which she replied with her now infamous blank stare. The food was okay, but I mean, this was just a pan-Asian restaurant gone wrong. The salt and pepper Sichuan calamari lacked salt and pepper. 
For the main, I had a massive portion of beef rendang, but it was just stodgy and yeah. All right, last complaint of this evening. This is the actual path that I needed to walk on. If you can't see the path, guess what? I couldn't either. <laughs> The next morning brought a beautiful pastel sunrise and a tide that seemed to be running away from me. Maybe running away from the resort. Time for breakfast. When I checked in, the front desk agent highly recommended that I came here instead of the other buffet restaurant, since this one was adults only. My camera is actually doing this room a bit more justice than it deserves. In reality, it was really dimly lit and just not inviting at all for a breakfast service. As for the tables and chairs, I moved three times before finding a table that didn't tip over every time you touched it. Service-wise, well, I asked for my coffee three times. Was completely wrong the first two times, then I think they just gave up. Food-wise, I think I'd call this an expansive three-star or mediocre four-star spread. I think it pretty much speaks for itself. So as I start to wrap this up, let me just say, I know I'm salty in this review, but I have not exaggerated anything. I'm just really frustrated by a resort that tries to spin itself as a five-star property when it's simply not even close. Honestly, at least the setting was beautiful. That's all I can say at this point because the rest was just an absolute train wreck. Looking at my score now, I feel like it's probably 10 points too high but I reckon that's because I'm worked up from reliving the experience right now. If you have friends or family who have been here and encouraged you to go, please politely decline. If you stayed here and loved it, okay. I mean, I'm happy you did, and I'm sorry if this video turned you off, but I need to call it as I see it, and this was just no bueno. Last up, the fitness center, which had out-of-order signs on multiple pieces of the equipment. All of that said, I do hope that you enjoyed this video today in some way, shape, or form. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my other content, which 9 times out of 10, 9.3 times out of 10 maybe even, is generally much more positive than today's video. I'll see you next time at the Cordis Hotel in Auckland. Oh, and thanks for watching to the end.